Breaking news, the chairman of the January 6th Select Committee now says the panel could send out more subpoenas as soon as this week as lawmakers press top uh, Trump allies to cooperate with their investigation. Our senior legal affairs correspondent Paula Reed is on the story for us tonight. Paula, this potentially could be a very significant development in the January 6th probe. More subpoenas, absolutely a very significant development. Now, Representative Benny Thompson, who chairs the select committee investigating January 6th, tells CNN that the committee could be sending out more subpoenas this week, though he wouldn't specify who would be in this next group. He did say it would likely be a broader group associated with the Trump White House and potentially individuals who have been charged with crimes associated with January 6th. The House Select Committee's quest to get information about former President Trump as part of its investigation into the January 6th insurrection may soon be coming to a head. Trump faces a looming deadline for asserting executive privilege to block subpoenas for four of his closest allies and other requests for documents. A biased hit job that is wasting everybody's time. Committee member Zoe Lofgren threatens serious consequences for Trump allies if Good they morning. do not cooperate. If they don't, I think we're prepared to take all of the steps available to us, which include civil action and criminal action. Lawmakers are also soliciting testimony from defendants who have been charged in the January 6th riot to provide an account of why they traveled to Washington that day to join the mob. This comes as former President Trump continues his baseless attacks on the American electoral system. They attacked and cheated on our elections. He lashed out at Republican leaders in Georgia who would not help him to undermine confidence in the election, going so far as to suggest the state would be better off with Democrat Stacey Abrams. Of course, having her, I think, might be better than having your existing governor, if you want to know the might, might very well be better. And even seemed to confess to pressuring Georgia's governor to help him overturn the state's results. I call him up. I said, Brian, listen, you know, you have a big election integrity problem in Georgia. I hope you can help us out and call a special election. Then outright lied about the recent sham review in Arizona, claiming he won. We won. On the Arizona forensic audit yesterday, at a level that you wouldn't believe it. When in fact, the partisan exercise conducted by Cyber Ninjas, a Florida-based company with no experience in auditing, found 99 more votes for Joe Biden and 261 fewer votes for Trump. I want to take a minute. To in an interview with 60 Minutes, Republican Representative Liz Cheney said other Republicans privately tell her they agree with her criticism of the former president, but won't say anything in public. If Republican leaders don't stand up and condemn what happened, then the voices in the party that are so dangerous will only get louder and stronger. And she singled out House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. What he's done is embrace Donald Trump. And if I were doing what he's doing, I, I would be deeply ashamed of myself. I don't know how you explain that to your children. She was critical of President Biden, specifically of his policies in Afghanistan and his handling of the economy, but said the American people deserve a better option than Trump. The alternative cannot be a man who doesn't believe in the rule of law and who violated his oath of office. Cheney is, of course, one of only two Republicans on the House Select Committee, which has already sent subpoenas to Trump advisors they believe might resist cooperating in the probe. Now, if those Trump loyalists refuse to hand over documents due next week or the former president tries to assert executive privilege, that could set off a lengthy court battle. Well, certainly could. Let's see what happens, Paula. Thank you very much, Paula Reed. Reporting for us. Let's get some more insight right now from CNN political analyst Maggie Haberman. She's the Washington correspondent for the New York Times. Maggie, uh, as you heard, Congresswoman Cheney, uh, she can ring all the alarm bells she wants, but the fact is the majority of Republican voters still say they think the election was stolen. So, how much weight does her voice carry in all of this? 
Look, I think, well, her voice is uh, much more significant, frankly, among people like us uh, than it is among grassroots Republicans. And among some senior Republicans, some independents, she is a significant voice, but it does not carry the same sway as Donald Trump's uh, voice does with this group of voters. Now, I don't think that's going to deter her from saying what she's saying. And I think that there are Republicans uh, who are deeply opposed to former President Trump and who want to make sure that their voices are heard. Uh, but at the moment, the, the party's base is with the former president and you know, contrary to, to predictions that that was going to change when he left office, we haven't seen that. If anything, we have seen the number of Republicans who have you know bought his his falsehoods about the last election have only grown. Representative Cheney, uh, Maggie, also says that she talks to colleagues behind the scenes uh, who agree with her among Republicans in Congress who back Trump. How many are, are true believers, and how many are just doing it uh, for political expediency? It's some combination. Look, Wolf, I mean, most politicians are interested in their own political future, uh, regardless of what they say, and that is across the board. What is true about a lot of Republican lawmakers, and or at least some at this point, I wouldn't say a lot, but it's still a, a significant number, um, uh, and the former president is a lot of them like him. A lot of them feel an affinity toward him. A lot of them feel very bonded to him in ways that you don't always see with political leaders and other elected officials. It's part of why he was able to you know, survive the first impeachment. It's why he, on January 6th, had so many Republicans who were willing to not vote to certify uh, a, a secure election and, and, and its outcome. And so it, there is this balancing act, but uh, what the Congresswoman says about the number of lawmakers who also resent him, who feel as if he has uh, his boot on their necks, who feel as if they're going to get threatened and are thrilled that he doesn't have his Twitter feed anymore, that's real too. It certainly is. I know, Maggie, you've explained that uh, Trump operates in 10-minute increments. Is that still the case, or is there a, a long-term strategy at work as he continues to question the results of the 2020 presidential election? Uh, he has not operated on long-term strategy as long as he has been in adulthood. It has not it has not changed since he left office. Look, I, you know, there is a, a division of opinion on whether he is going to run for office again. There are those who think he is definitely doing it. There are those who think that he's going to act as if he is and then ultimately not do it because he's, you know, that that formulation is he's worried about losing a second time. He, he, would, he would likely win the nomination, um, but a general election would be very hard for him. That is not how he tends to project these things out. I don't think this is any different. I think at the moment his business is making money in politics and talking about running is how you do that. However, that can then trigger actually running. You know, it, what's so worrisome, uh, Maggie, is that the threats posed by Trump and those who believe his lies about the election are not a thing of the past. The ongoing assault on democracy here in the United States is very real and very dangerous, isn't it? It's very real, Wolf, and I think that what the people who want to say nobody should pay attention to what Donald Trump is saying are missing is one of his uh, abilities is to get other people to do things in his name and for him, often so that he doesn't have his fingerprints on them. What's been so striking in the last couple of days is him talking about his call to Brian Kemp and talking about the pressure that he was exerting on Brian Kemp because he often tries to have a little bit of a buffer and some distance. But that, it's not as if he's operating in a vacuum. There are people who will do things in support of him and in his name, and you're seeing it across the country. Is it a majority? No, but is it a majority of Republicans at the moment? It, it's it's approaching it. Yeah, uh, it's really worth